Hi, welcome to Woodworking Wisdom. I'm Steph. This week it's Recycling Week, so we set the guys a challenge to turn a pallet into a project. So let's see what they made. Well, hi everybody. Uh, well, my decision on project for this um, this challenge um, has been based on some of the previous projects I've been doing. So the the wall hangings, uh, the fishing lures, that sort of thing. So we're going to do again. It's something that I've got at home already. Um, it's a single fish, and you can adapt this to whatever you want to do. But it's just a bit of bit of fun. So it's a, a wall plaque. Um, you can turn it into chalkboard. You can turn it into coat hangers for your kids' uh, bedrooms. All those sorts of things. We're just going to do a um, a, a bit of a play plaque really so it's a picture of a fish we're going to use some aerosols to decorate it we're going to do a bit of carving on it we'll get the airbrushes out ring even do some finger painting so how about that so a little bit for every everybody so i know the other lads are, are getting on with theirs at the moment so we're going to get straight in i've taken off already four pieces um, off of our pallets and we're all sharing these pallets so we're using the same ones and just cutting them to pieces. I've got the nail holes in still, um, we've got, it's proper gnarly timber, we've got old knot holes that you can see all the way through. Um, so there's lots going on here. All I want to do really, because this isn't supposed to be crisp and clean and all those sorts of things, so all I'm going to do, because I need to join it together, it's just edge each of these boards. So we're going to put it on the um, uh, the surface planer, edge the boards. We'll come back to the table then. We'll just glue them together. Then we'll have a pause while we go and see what everyone else is doing. And then we'll come back and cut it to shape before we start looking at carving, uh, shaping, and then the interesting bits, obviously, the painting and, and decorating of it. So we'll crack on straight over to the, the, uh, the, the surface planer. And we're just going to edge each of these boards. So. As you can see here, like I've already said, we do have the nail holes in. Um, what we need to make sure is once we've taken them off the pallets, we've cleaned out those holes. So basically there's no residue from rusty old nails or anything like that. Have a good look over because sometimes what you'll also find on these pallets, you'll have staples in the edges and that's just where they've stapled on labels, that sort of stuff. So just have a good scan over them before you, before you start planing or thicknessing, you don't want to mess up one of your expensive blades. So I have already done this, but I'm just checking again. You can't check often enough, so just making sure. The other thing what we've done here is I've got the this guard right up close. I want to make sure that I can actually get my, my boards through. Okay, but the rest of the guard or the rest of the blade is, um, is hidden. Um, you can see where we've got it at the moment. If I want to bring that closer, all I'll do is bring the whole fence up that way. The back of the uh, the blade is is guarded. So if you don't, if you want to just mix it around and use a different part of your blade, you can do that. So let's just readjust that. I'll put those bits at the back. Just check to where I am. Like I said, I'm not overly fussy. I just want a clean edge. I'm not trying to make sure that everything's perfect. These faces are going to be clean later on. The back probably won't even be touched. So I'm not too worried about that. So let's get on and we'll put everything through this th um, this th this surface planer. Yeah, if we get out the extraction on them, Ben. Just keeping everything out of the way. So we're on a good clean edge. one done. Now these have come off the same palette so I'm hoping that they're of similar thickness. Not a guarantee but like I said it's not overly precise and not don't really care that much. If it's a few mil out There we are, so let's have a, a look at what we've ended up with. 
Okay, so there's our pieces of timber. Let's turn it over. So we've got the same color facing up. And there's one bit that I looked at that I thought, I'm going to make that the outside piece. I think it was that one. It was a little bit gnarly than the rest, so let's turn them around. Fit them together dry first, just to, just to see which the best fit is going to be. Bring it over a little bit further. I said I'm not worried about any of these nail holes or anything like that. Okay, so there we are. So I'm happy with, with where we are at that point. Um, we're going to do one surface on each load. Let's bring it nice and close to me. I'm not intending to get covered in glue, don't worry. I'm just going to put a little bit on. This is not your prized piece of antique furniture we're about to make, or high-end furniture. This is literally just going to be a nice little carving. Something to do with the kids. Don't forget, if you haven't got a big thickening machine, surface thicknesser, planar thicknesser, then just use your hand plane. I mean, if the timber's good enough, you can get away without using a, a, a plane at all and just butt joint it together. So let's pop that there. Get one of the clamps over. Looking good. So I'm not taking too much care at this stage. Let's get them there. Now you'll notice here what's happening. I've got one side cupping, so I'll put this side on the un this clamp on the underside, and we'll do exactly the same thing. Put it back straight. Just before we glue it, right before we tighten those clamps all the way up, let's just adjust it. Make sure that's good. There we are. Now before I just walk away and leave that, I'll make sure I'm not leaving a glue trail everywhere. So as coarse and as rough as that so I think what we're going to do now we're going to leave that to dry we're going to come back in a couple of hours in the meantime we'll have a look and see what the lads are doing uh, this week was a bit different we are doing a bit of a pallet project so a pallet challenge um, it is recycling week so we're making something from nothing and um, yeah got my pallet ready um, I'm going to make a set of, uh, well, or a shelf with a kind of decorative background. I've picked this palette because it's a bit scruffy. As you can see, all these kind of markings and stuff on it. Um, and I want to keep that as part of the kind of character of the, of the shelf. Um, so we're going to make a really simple shelf. Um, not, much, not much tooling required. You could pretty much do all of this with a handsaw. Um, so, you know, grab yourself a pallet and a saw. Um, and all you really need from there is um, potentially some, some screws, a screwdriver. Or um, we've got our little drills here. Um, yeah, so really minimal tools and a nice little, nice looking little project. So the bits that I want to use are these are the, the kind of foot of the pallet, if you will. This is what it stands on, and this is where it's picked up this kind of patina on it, all these rough scratches and stuff I want to make part of the project. Um, you'll notice it's got these blocks um, in between. Um, that's just to kind of lift it off the ground a bit. Now, you could get your um, kind of crowbar, wrecking bar in here and pull that up. and pop those um, little uh, nails through. Um, but I'm just going to use these little sections in between. So we've got, what have we got here? They're, I think they're about 45 centimeters, 450 mil uh, spacing between these. And these are 90 mil or nine centimeters across. So we're going to use five of these 
Um, so 5 times 9 is 45, which is actually giving us our width. So luckily things have kind of come in together. And if the shelf overshoots the boards a little bit, we can trim them off at the end. Um, but it should kind of work together naturally um, with our kind of sizings on the on the palette. Okay, so I've I've given this a little look over. There's no kind of nails or anything in these boards um, which we're going to remove. Um, but do keep an eye out for that. They can take teeth off the saw. Um, they can blunt the thing. Um, so just have a look. Any little stones that may have embedded when this pallet was on the floor. You know, with a big heavy machine on it, I expect this one. Um, sometimes they pick up those stones. So just pick them out. You know, get rid of the, the worst of it. Anything that's going to do any damage to your tools. Um, I'm not going to use a handsaw, but if I did, I would align it with that block. Just get that little cut going. And we just need to saw these um, six pieces out. Okay. I'm going to be lazy today. I got myself a, a jigsaw. Um, and that should speed the process up a bit. So I'll cut these out. And we'll see you in a minute. go so nice and easy with the jigsaw but like we say you can use your hand saw um, you could use a, a, a rail saw make sure it's always supported so your rail will be sat on these so when you make that cut it doesn't drop in but I certainly wouldn't put something layered like this on a band saw or a table saw make sure you've got full control over whatever it is that you're using um, because once you've made that cut, say we were cutting this on a bandsaw or something, once you've made that cut, that could potentially drop down and um, interfere with the, with the blade. So I would do this by hand, use something like a jigsaw, potentially a little kind of uh, plunge saw, but make sure wherever you're cutting from that the saw is um, sat on top of something that's not going to drop when you've made the cut. Okay. Um, Actually, I want to pinch one of these as well, so one of the bottom layer. So let's cut one of those out. We've got a bit missing there. Um, and this doesn't have to be as long as the others. So I'm just going to use the side of the block there as a little guide. Left handed on this one. Okay. So we're done with the jigsaw. That's been really helpful. Um, stopped us from having to do all the hard work with a handsaw. And I'm just going to pop this pallet to one side for now. Actually, before I put it to one side, I'll just show you the palette that we're using. Um, it's quite clean on the top face there. It's not too bad. Maybe a few footprints and a, a little bit of muck. But what I want to go for is that really kind of rustic, kind of dirty look. So um, yeah, I've, I've chosen these boards, which are the kind of feet of the boards, or the feet of the palette. So, but lots of potential other projects, maybe a few more. Um, shelving units in there. So, 
one of the topics we've been given was can you recycle a pallet and make it into something so each of us has taken a pallet and that's what we're going to do recycle it so here we go my farmyard there you go i'm done no okay all right can't have it that simple can i so what can we make with a pallet okay so we've each chosen something to do i think ben told you what he's making i'm not going to you're gonna to have to just watch it all now so okay with my pallet we want to get the boards off going to use them we could try and take it apart, but I've tried this in the past. The nails tend to hold things really well. I don't need too long of them, so we've got about 20 mil thick sections. I think they're about 90 mil wide. So what do I do with this? I'm going to put them down on the floor. I want those boards. So first thing I'm just going to do, I don't want to hit the nails with the saw. So let's have a quick look. I've got a nail there, that one there, there. Just to highlight things, marker pen's good for this. Just to tell me where things are, this end, I've got one there. It's amazing, some of these are two nails in, some have four. But if I highlight the ones that are wider up, apart, I can see where everything's going to be. Okay. All I want to do with this is get those boards off. Um, I don't know about the other boys, but manual labour can be a bit much. So you can see what I'm doing now, I've got the guide rail for a saw can lay it on making sure I'm away from those nails got my black line that's helpful one of my favorite items to use at home definitely I couldn't live without my festal guide rail saw or whatever manufacturer you have okay I've had my festal guide rail saw for years and it's been abused keeps working um, fantastic for this sort of stuff uh, we can put our lead on, so into there. So all we really want to do with these, break these down. Don't be along. I've got to tap on my body right now. Just about, okay. I think it might be just a tad short. Let's have a look. Yeah, that one's gone. They vary in thickness. Trying to be quite shallow with my cut. So let's just double check. I can alter the depth now. Nice thing with the saw in here, we've got micro adjuster on my depth. That's good. I'm lying back on, so as long as I line the saw back up the rubber work. Taking about a millimetre past now. The guide rail has rubber strips underneath, so it'll prevent it from slipping in use, which is good. If I'm doing something really, really accurate, I would actually clamp it down with a couple of clamps. Now just checking my nails now, see where we are, make sure we're not going to hit them with a the saw blade. Also looking at the middle rail of the pallet to try and give me a guide of what looks equal. Now I've worked, if you look at down the far side first, then go to this one, because these are going to become loose. I don't want my body weight on top of them. Just pulling the hoover hose round so it doesn't catch. And hopefully, fantastic. So let's put our saw up out the way. We're going to want that again later. Put the guide rail out. So on here, this is going to give me the basics of my material that I want for my little project. Quick and easy way to break them down with the pallet to get rid of it and store it a bit better. I'll cut the other ones in a minute on the other side. But that gives my material. At this stage, I want to make a, a board, a panel, if you like. So I'm going to actually machine these, but I'm only going to machine the back face and the two sides so I can glue them all together. I'm also going to look at trying to get the boards so they are alternate grain orientation, try and reduce the cupping. So centre of the tree, cut down, up, and there, turn over, so I can lay them out in a sequence so it will help remain flat. Okay, so from here, we're going to use the planer in a minute, we'll see, set, reset the cameras a little bit. I think you can go and see what Ben's doing. I expect he's up to something. Okay. So we'll take our boards. We can lose the rest of the pallet for now. We'll see you in a minute. So let's have a look at what we got. Let's lay them out. Um, so basically what we're going to do is create a kind of a shelf that's going to sit on... on um, these this kind of decorative backing board and I think we'll cut these at different lengths and I'm going to do that on the bandsaw 
um, nice and easy and like I said I've looked at this make sure there's no little stones no um, sneaky nails have um, kind of been fired off position um, so worth having a look at what you're um, you know what you're working with um, again we want to be careful if we're putting things through the saw like that okay so I want this really mucky one to be my shelf and then I think we've got a decent balance of, of kind of um, the markings I might just switch that one around so we've got that muck running on the outside all those circular saw marks where this has been um, kind of uh, rough sawn we want all of that on show um, that's kind of the the feel of this little rustic um, shelf okay so you can see where I've gone a bit wonky here and there with a couple of these cuts um, that's fine I want to cut them fairly square so I'm going to do that on the bandsaw and I think um, we're going to change the length of some of these so I've got my bandsaw ready to go hooked up with the extractor like I say that one's going to be my shelf so we can pop that to one side and then I think we want um, two slightly longer ones here and here so we'll keep them slightly longer and we'll cut a little bit off of these so we get a kind of a staggered um, look ready now to do a little bit on the bandsaw before we do that let's head over to Jason and see what uh, see what he's making out of his palette okay so we've cut the timber I've laid it out on the bench I've numbered each piece of wood and which side needs to have a square edge on it so my aim really is to flatten one face and the edges to make up one wide board as a panel I've looked at the grain orientation, so on the end grain we've got cup up, cup down, so I'm trying to keep that panel flat. So I'm trying to get reversal of those board orientations of how they've been cut. Quite an important part, so when we glue it up, it'll try and keep the panel nice and flat. So on this one we've got number one, which side we're going to machine, all those little things are on there, okay? So I'm going to put those back out of the way, going to put the goggles on. Ben's going to put the air on for the extractor behind him there, I think, so we can do that. I'm just going to put the machine on here. My number I'm putting face down so I can clean that off, but I know which order they are in if I'm careful. Got the bridge guard in place on here nicely. We're going to drive over. Okay, gently through. Not too much of a hurry. We want to get a clean surface for the back. I know which edge I'm on down on there. A little bit. We've made sure of our pallet. I've checked things over. This wasn't the ground floor level of that pallet. So hopefully no stones or nails or anything in this. Number two, both sides on this. So I'll whiz those through. A bit more to do. Still not clean. Using that bridge guard we drive over. Do our edge, not feeding through too quick, giving it time. Cut these nicely. Three.
Okay, so we've got all the boards, got a machine back and an edge to relate to how they're actually going to go together on the bench. So next stage, we're going to go back to the workbench, set the clamps up and get it glued up. Okay, with our panel then we've got the boards laid out in sequence where we want them. I put them on the sash clamps just to help glue them up. So I've laid them out, we've got that natural saw and edge on the top, the flat surface underneath, we've obviously got the jointing edges facing one another, so we need to glue them together. The easiest thing I'm going to do now, just rotate the boards in sequence. Bring up, okay. That one's got to go out of the way, that's fair. Last one, we can put back out the way, because we don't need that yet. That's not going to need any glue, the glue on the other board will give it. I'm going to use silicon tray, some general purpose type bond, all right? The original. So I'll put that there. Silly glue brush. We played with these the other week. I love these bits. You can peel the glue off when you're done. I can be quite quick this way. Reduce the open time of how long things are sat here. Some of you might even have aspect of glue roller. So we can brush our glue on. Put it along. Nice thing I find with this silicon glue brush, you don't get loads and you can pull it about a bit. So you can smear it out so you get a finer layer. I know I'm going to get a bit of runoff either side down through the boards. We can cope with that, we can clean that up in a second. glue tray out the way that will dry bring my board over I can even do a little bit of a rub joint put it together next one we'll bring in a bit tight let's come back a bit I've got to drop this in at an angle so we need just a little bit more room that's good again last one we'll just do that rub joint then we get our clamps in just gently pinning things up to start with not loads of pressure using my fingertips trying to push things down so the back where we've got that machine surface is nice and flush so I play with a fingertip there this one's pretty good other side I go stretch just working along seeing what feels pretty good they're good there that makes a change little bit of pressure don't need loads of pressure as long as they've come together well and I've checked that Make sure things are right. Now we need a third clamp across the top. If not, you're going to bow that board dramatically. You'll pull it up. So we need to have something up on here. Now I'm just going to pinch those clamps up. All right, so good. They come together nicely. In the cup, a bit of warm water. Just going to wipe off that excess glue for a minute, especially on the top here get right down into those gaps the boards actually vary in thickness just a little bit which is what we wanted that rough saw nature I don't want too much glue in there so the bit of water pulling out so we can clean it up once I've done this side pick it up turn it over we'll do the other Check things are tight. Roll it over. There's that nice machine surface again. Let's just clean that excess glue off. It's not going to matter as much on the back. Clean the cloth a little bit. Last little bit. That's those done. So, going to leave those to dry. Okay, so I think you can see what we've got there. We're going to leave those to dry and go up. Obviously, then you can come back. We'll show you a little bit more on what we're trying to work on. Just anyone got any ideas yet? Be interesting to know. Okay, so I think you go go see Colwyn. We'll see you soon. Okay, so I've taken out the clamps. So I've uh, drawn a rough picture of the fish that um, we want to end up with. So uh, there it is. And now it's just straight to the band. So we're just going to roughly cut this out before we go um, into the the, uh, the craft room and start shaping with the, one of the rotary um, carvers. So let's go straight to the bandsaw. I'm going to take a few of the big bits out first, just get rid of some of um, the bulk.
I was just getting rid of some of the bulk first and then we can start actually cutting the detail There we are, so we're going to pop through now next door to Ben, see what he's doing and to start shaping the fish. I've chosen um, what boards I want where. I'm going to have two slightly longer ones um, and three slightly shorter ones. Things like this when you've got them laying side by side usually work better or more pleasing to the eye when they're in odd numbers. Um, so I've gone with five boards and then we've got our shelf. Um, so we're going to cut a little bit off of these, make them a bit shorter. Um, you could use your mitre fence and do everything nice and square. I think um, I quite want it a little bit scrappy, a little bit rough and ready. So I'm just going to cut these, um, push them through by hand on the on the scrolls. Um, sorry, on the bandsaw. Um, bandsaw set up over here. Um, I just got to um, check the extractions on. Let's pop that on. And we'll use that same extractor for our um, disc sander in just a moment. Um, but let's get cutting on the bandsaw. Like I say, a rough 90 degrees across um, top and bottom. And um, we're just going to take off any of these kind of more um, kind of gnarly chips that you get um, on the breakout with the, um, with the jigsaw. So onto the bandsaw. I'm going to pop my extraction on. Sorry if it makes a loud noise. Where are we with the extractor here? There we go. Bandsaw running. And I think I'm going to take... Maybe an inch and a half off of each end. And just try and keep that fairly square. New 
blade in my bandsaw, so it's cutting beautifully. Um, I just got to make sure we're not um, hitting any stones or any nails that may be in the pallet. So what have we got here? We've got two long ones and three short ones. Oops. Let's get them laid out. So we've got a slight stagger to our shelves, our, our kind of backing board if you will. And then we're going to put our little shelf on there. Good stuff. Um, remember we took out another piece. We took out that um, kind of cleaner piece I guess from the, um, the top side of the, um, of the pallet. I'm just going to run that down the middle and that's going to act as a kind of brace. So we need two of those. So I'm just going to whiz that down the middle on the bandsaw, roughly. Again, we're not too worried about things being uh, bang on. So nice little rip fence, just bring that in so we're roughly on that halfway mark. Extract it back on. That one, and we need our push stick. So we've got a push stick because at the end of this cut, we're going to be fairly close to the blade. So push sticks come in now, taking care of all that kind of pushing. And I'm pushing slightly against the fence. I'm going to leave my pressure there so they don't fall off the back. Turn the saw off. And again, we just need to wait for that to stop. Should be under 10 seconds. And um, there we go. We've got our two little kind of cross braces, if you will. So these are going on the back, um, top and bottom. And if you wanted a really good way to hang this, you could throw that um, that bandsaw table off at 45 degrees and make almost like a French cleat that goes on the back. So that could be a nice little idea. Just turning our boards over. Good. And again, not being too precious about where things lie, it's um, it's all part of its um, kind of charm. So, going to just chuck a few holes in this. So we're going to um, drill through this top piece, not too far into our um, project, but this is going to go at the top and bottom. So I can feel the difference in the resistance as the um, the drill bit goes through that top bit. And this is kind of like a clearance hole for when we screw our screws in. And you need to consider what sort of size screws you're using. You don't want these to go right the way through the project and be poking out sharp on the front end. Um, so what have we got here? These are 3.5 by uh, 30 mil. And just a good way to test if you bring your, um, you know, your kind of backing board and just offer the screw up to that, um, it, it's not going to go right the way through. So it's just stopping short of my bench. 
Okay, so drill driver, little 10.8, really nice little drill this one. And just putting those screws in. Uh, Posi 2. And they should just pull themselves in. Um, so we haven't got that screw head sticking up. This is just holding the thing together. So if you wanted any gaps or anything like that, you need to consider it uh, now. So just pinch that last one in at the end there. Um, so that's our basic backing board. Pretty much done. Really easy. All we've got left to do now is to um, attach our shelf and you can have it whatever kind of height that you want it. Obviously we've got our little um, our little strut in behind here so it's not going to sit there. But I would say you want to come kind of two thirds of the way down. So it's got a little overhang, you're gonna have a little shadow thrown underneath. Um, but we're gonna, um, we're gonna pop back and see Jason, see how he's getting on with his lovely project. Um, see you back here in a minute and we'll pop this shelf on. Right, okay, so we're taking the panel out of clamps, got it up on the bench, glued together, one piece of wood. How's that? Isn't that nice? Now, what I've done on the back here, I've done corner to corner to put a pencil mark just to locate the middle. All right, on the back edge because it's flatter. All I then want to do is drill a hole. Take the drill, but it'll be better on that mark. And I'm just going to come off the front of the bench. You might lose me a little bit, but you've got to go all the way through, okay? So we drilled in a hole real easy one that's going to give us our position to everything mark everything off of okay you understand as we go on so we've got that little hole about three mil diameter maximum obviously comes all the way through next thing i'm going to work on top face of the board want to hold it down so i've got some of the path stuff our surface cam clamp there just to grip things i want to give this a bit of a scrub so i'm going to go wire brush all right if I had access to a rotary one and a drill, it would be good, but I'd probably want to do it outside. This is just about pulling out the debris a little bit, cleaning up. We're going to leave it a bit like this. I'm not going to spend long with this, but it'll give you the scope. It'll be nice to brush it out. All right, it takes a bit of effort in here. It'd be nice to take it outside and do it. From there, I'm going to start doing a decorated effect. So I'm going to go back to that guide rail. All right. On here I have, and people are going to get funny about this, look, I've vandalised it. I put a hole in here, this one there, and countersunk it. Why are there three holes? Because I've played around with them out of offset I want. So, we then want a wood screw, which we can locate in that hole we just drilled through, which is there. Okay, got that. So that's what that's for. All right, so we've got a hole. Now I want to mark out a circle on this top face. You might have a compass big enough. Some of us don't. A bit of strip of wood. I said, so what? Okay, so I've drilled a hole up in here, this end. All right, there's a hole. I can put the screw in there. I've got a diameter I want. I've marked off that hole, so I've measured the point of what I want. I'm going to put the screw into that drilled hole. Further back down here, I've got a hole which gives me my diameter from the centre point, half of our circle. So that allows me, if I can drift up over that step on the pallet board, draw this round, get a nice circle. All right. Going to come up round there, gently round. Bring that round there. All right. How about that? Wasn't that easy? Why not have a piece of timber you can drill a few holes in, okay? Take the screw back out. We're going to want it back in there in a second. Now, I want to do almost an indexed effect on here, working around it. So, if I measure the diameter, okay, across it, 
we can use pi no not cherry or whatever else you've got we can use pi 3.1456 something i think google it okay you can work out the diameter or the measurement of that diameter from there you can actually divide that out so i'm just going to do that i know i have got a 480 mil circle so let me just grab what we need over here i'm going to block the camera got that okay come back in so i've got our circle let's have a quick measurement for you i can tell you what we've got 480 mil how about that i've already worked it out of how many dividers i want i think i've got 36 so i've set the measurement so our measurement all the way around here so diameter times by 3.14 okay we'll give you a measurement i've worked out that i want 36 divisions so i'm gonna mark these round okay all the way all i'm doing is marking out on that line pushing the point in slightly give us a step point okay so i expect you'll want to go and see what carwin or ben are doing for a minute whilst i finish doing my what's classed as guesting we'll see you in a minute okay so we're in ben's craft room now i've got the the fish held in a vice and what i've done to um to secure it i've uh, just screwed a piece of scrap wood onto the back of the fish um, made sure the screws aren't so long as they come through the front and then held it in the vise so you can see here if we come down onto the table that actually I've got that in a really good place to be able to, to start carving. The tools we're going to use because I have them here anyway we're going to use the Arbitec mini mini carver okay so it's got a nice small carving head in the tip um, so we can get a lot get rid of a lot of that material quite quickly and then we're going to go to a little power file just to sand up remember that this project doesn't want to be smooth and lovely and gorgeous and all those sorts of things. We want some some roughness there. We want to see some of that timber. And when we start putting the paint on, we're going to show more of that up. So it can have facets on it and those sorts of things. It doesn't make doesn't matter. It's a lovely project for that because it's nice and quick. Now, of course, not all of you are going to own power tools like that. So if you want to, maybe just use a carving chisel, a big carving chisel, a normal carpentry chisel. Just go with the grain and take some of those corners away. Um, a, a, a normal hand file, uh, or hand rasp rather, and then go down through files and sandpaper. It's a lovely little project. The kids can get involved. Everybody can have a go at things like this. You don't have to make them this size also. You can make them smaller if you want. So I'm about to put my um, my visor on, my hearing protection, all those sorts of things. I'm going to take this off and, uh, and we'll start shaping. So I'll be back with you in a moment. Having marked those all out, we've got our equal spacing. I'm going to put the screw back in there and I've got to find that hole. There it is down there. I'm going to use the guide rail again. I want to fix this down. We've countersunk that hole that we're going to use, so the screw head will be flush or under the guide rail, but needs to be able to move, as in round. Okay, then from there, I'm going to get the guide rail saw, I'm going to put it on. At this point, no power. I can bring it down with touch. So, there at the moment, skimming a cut got five mil there let's come down two millimeters so i can use the fine adjustment scale let's just flip that round so on here we'll go to zero where we were was five mil i can come down millimeter increasements two mil i've also got fine adjuster on this little knob up on here really good okay get to there i can look at things see where they are that's good again the boards fixed nicely down on the bench the guide rail has an anti-slip on the underside of it, so that should be good. Let's just put power into there. I've still got to hold it. I've still got to hold the left-hand side of it, keep my fingers out of the way. Then we're going to want that extraction nozzle. We're only going to do about a 2 mil score cut. Okay, so first thing I'll do is line up with each dot. That can come back. Just want to see what we're getting. Yeah, that'll do. That could possibly come. Let's come down one more. Right. We'll leave that one. No one will notice that, will they? It's a, it's a, it's a pallet wood project. If I push the saw forward up to the next mark. Bring it round. 
so forward allows me to see it better. Uh, one. Woo. Right, okay, good. We can take this off. Hopefully. Come out. That's that. Okay. So, I've used our guide rail. We've got our bit. Take that out for a second. We're going to pin it back down, but let's have a quick. Okay. I don't know if Ben can shoot on the main one, I mean... Like, oh, no, figure that. All right, now, okay, so we've got lots of spirals. I'd love to know what you think this is at the moment. No, it's not a cheese board. All right, okay, so... Got to set up a few other things. So I'll let you have a wander around, go see what the other boys are doing. And um, we're going to do the next little stage. Okay, see you in a minute.
Right, okay then guys, so you're back in here. Let's have a quick look. Done a few things. I've got to fix this down on the bench so the middle part won't move. My next operation, I want to cut a circle out of the centre. I might even cut the circle out here or I might leave it square. Undecided at the moment. That's a, hmm, okay. We can even easily square up the frame, which could look nice. So I need to cut the circle out of the middle. So to fact, I'm going to do the router. And um, we've got to cut all the way through. Going to go with something sacrificial a little bit underneath. Bit thin bit of plywood, got a bit of damage on. So we're going to put that in. Going to make sure that's where my circle's going to be. Put it down. Going to fix this down, three screws. Got to pull the screw heads in just under or level on the pine we got for the pallet material. Quite an easy thing. That will fix it nicely. The major thing that's stopping that middle bit moving when we cut all the way through. We don't want it jumping about, okay? So, next thing we want a diameter. Um, I want from memory, I've got a rough scratch line out in there. I think it is, let's have a look. I think I need 250 mil as the recess, but I'm going to rebate in from the back. So therefore, I've got to allow for that. So the rebate cutter, if I just grab, got on here. I've measured this. We have a six mil overhang from that bearing. Okay, so I've got the bearing on here. I've got to fix it down. I'm changing the bearings. You're going to change them when we use it as well. So I've got six mil overhang. That will be my rebate. So 250 minus 12 because there's six either side, 238. So need to mark that out. So we've gone back to a uh, compass, that wooden strip. Look, I can fix it to that hole. Just bring it down. I can draw my circle, it's there. So bring it up round. That's my diameter we're gonna cut out. That's simple. All right. So then we're gonna set the router up. First thing we need is something to control the router, give us a circle. So the metal bar you get with your fence. Um, I vandalize it. I drill a hole in it. I don't know if you can see, probably on the video, let's have a, okay, I'll bring it up. I've drilled a hole through the bar. I've created a flat on the top, which makes it easier to drill the hole. So hand file or grinder, create a flat, punch it with a hammer and a punch. Then go to your pillar drill and drill through it nice and cleanly. So by putting the flat on the top, it's easier to drill it. I then need a spacer to lift it up. I can use a nut. Now, what I don't know, let's just see if my screw that I've got is gonna be long enough. I think so, it's gotta go into that hole and secure. Let's just get the screwdriver tip and see what he does. Now, needs to be able to swing it. That looks okay. No real movement, a little bit, but nothing too drastic. Let's just see if we tighten up. I wanna see if the screw's gripping is really my concern. See what he does. Okay, I think we'll get away with that. Now, router, I've already set up the cutter. We're going with a six mil straight cutter at this stage unhook the cable around everything we've got to go fence bar holding so I've got to get one in there through to there gonna bring the cutter down just onto the board again at this stage you've got no power I'm just coming out setting up where that rail needs to be lock those off double check so I get right there and have a look at the width for the cutter I might be fractionally over just trying to see how much movement I get on there might need to change that screw but let's get this set that's better okay check my circle now let's move things in a bit which is interesting I need to be spot on my line so we double check again make sure things are right this bit's quite important because I want to get that mirror to fit and nicely. Check where that is. Check first thing I want to check before we switch on. Will it move round? A little bit tight, so let's undo the screw a little bit. Check it on move. See what's happening. Can I swing that round as a circle? Okay. Good. That's good. Check the diameter. Fantastic. Right, so we double checked everything. Let's bring the cutter back up. I've already set the depth. I've sighted that to check it's going to go through the board. We're going to have to work around this gently. So we'll put that on there. Hoover nozzle will be a great addition again. So I'm just going to fit this on the back of the router. Get to there. Earmuffs ready to go. So bring those on. 
so it comes down. I can set this a little bit. I can move it around. It's going to bounce off my groove a little bit more cut. Then we run past. Come down a bit more. <laughs> Alright, let's just come up a minute. Move my clamp over here, so let's put him back in. Okay. I'm going to bring the other one up because once we cut through the outer edge, again things will start to move. So it'd be good just to have these back up in place. We've got the right angle on the back corner, that's stopping things moving there. We've got enough room to get the router around. Uh, I thought it might come over a little bit. Which means I'm probably going to leave it square when we're finished. If we're going to do it round, you'd need to fix the corners down, drill down through, cut your circle out the same as we're doing now. So let's keep going through. Put the hose back in. Trying to untangle the cable. So you saw the idea of going forward and back. It's about trying not to wind things up too much. Back on. Down to that. Let's see where we are. Starts in a prime. I don't think so. Come there. So gently coming through. Ooh. To the back in. Such an important part. If you look at the mess we're getting, there isn't any. Okay. Turn everything off. I'm hoping that's not too noisy when we've done that, but you've seen how we cut out our circle, okay? Real simple to do. Everything's still nicely fixed. The middle's in place. Okay, good. So, we can take the router off, which means you've got to undo that screw. So, let's get into there. A little bit more. Now, like I said, if I was going to do this as a round outer, I could leave it square. We could have it round. I'd need to cut it out with the router now, do exactly the same before I move anything because the minute I undo these, I'm going to move, but I'll cut this back to square and we can even use the Festool saw for that. The middle's held nicely there. Let's take this out. This is a by-product. Okay, lift that out. What we need to do now, work from the other side. So we're going to flip it over. Alright. So I'm just going to set up the router again for the next little bit. And we'll get you back. I expect one of the boys will entertain you with something else. Can't wait you going fishing or something. So, thanks Jason. That was really cool. Um, that project's looking really nice. Um, let's get back to our little shelf. So, we've done our back panel and I think it looks quite cool it's got all this marking going on all these saw marks so really kind of rough and ready looking um, back panel there I've got my old scrubby old shelf which I'm going to put on um, I'm just feeling underneath having a look our, um, our little um, kind of straight underneath there is um, is right down the, the bottom section so I can put this shelf pretty much where I want it. Um, I'm coming down just below two thirds so we've got a little bit of an overhang underneath creating a bit of interest um, and then we've got the kind of the the meat of it up the, the other end there. I'm just going to flip this around actually because I think I prefer that as, a, as the, um, the kind of top it's got more kind of scruffiness going on so let's spin our project round um, and like we were saying before 
this is a bit rough and ready. It doesn't need to be square or 90 degrees, but if it is on the wonk, it's really going to show. Um, so I like to just bring a little square in, just align it to the side of the board there, just to make sure that we're not a kind of a million miles off. I'm going to do a little pencil mark down on the back end of our board here and something similar on this end. And I'm going for around about the middle of where that board sits. That looks pretty good. Again, you could measure this out. If these were all um, in line across the bottom, you could measure from the, the middle up. You could use a bigger square and just draw yourself a line across. Um, but we are just going a bit rough and ready today. Just move my drill. Um, so I'm drawing a line across the back. Just going to double check with my square. Okay. So drawing myself a line. Nice easy thing to follow when we're um, when we're drilling down through. Having a look at my um, little plank here, and I want this to be the leading edge, the front edge. So I'm going to pop it that way around in the vise. Just align it to the edge of the bench there. And I think I'm going to get a little clamp. A little spring clamp. I'm putting the long arm of it under the bench um, so it's not, you know, <coughs> going to hit me. And that should stop it from um, from moving down when we're um, drilling into it. We're going to align our line that we've drawn over the top. And that looks pretty good. Um, again, you could clamp it here. Um, Just make sure everything's um, aligned. Um, and I'm going to pop a little drill hole in each of these planks. Um, and that's going to give the, the shelf a little bit more strength. Um, we don't need to hold this thing together anymore. It's held together by these two. Um, but I think it's just going to give the shelf a little bit more support having those extra screws. OK, just checking underneath, making sure there's no kind of massive gaps. We're pretty good there. I'm just going to push that plank back up because there is a slight gap. Hand on top to make sure it's not going to move. And we can start to blast some drill holes in. Again, you feel the change in resistance. and We don't want to drill right the way into uh, the back of our shelf. We want that screw thread to hold that. Good. Sometimes when you're drilling and stuff, it can throw the project out a little. So I'm just checking everything's still aligned. And worth if you're um, putting lots of screws in something and you're like me, you get um, loose screws every now and then and kind of chuck them back in a, in a um, tub or something like that. Make sure you haven't got extra long screws in there because sometimes, you know, you might put one of these in and you'll end up um, screwing it to the bench. Um, just swapping out to my little drill driver. Again, a little bit of pressure from the top. Have a slight little shift then, but we're all good. I think let's do one either end, stop the thing twisting if we're screwing in. 
and then we can just drop these other screws in. Nice and easy. So you'll notice I'm on slow speed with the um, with the screwing and the high speed with the drilling. Okay, so these drills both got one and two speeds. Um, and it's one for screwing, two for um, drilling. Okay, let's have a little look, see what we got. Oh, we still got our clamp on there. I thought, oh no, I screwed it to the bench, but it's not. It's our clamp holding things straight. <laughs> okay, cool. So we've got our shelf there. Um, just a little bit to do. Uh, we've got a fairly equal distance um, on, on each side because um, I trimmed that extra bit off. Now, there is a little bit of breakout and things like that. What I would do is get your sanding block, here's my sanding block, um, a bit of 100 grit on there, so really kind of rough. Um, we don't want to kind of sand anything smooth or anything like that. Um, and we just go round those kind of corners really. Make sure we get all that break out. Get rid of all of that. And it should come off quite easily with, with a rough sandpaper like this. Again, just knocking off these corners. And then we can just go down this front edge here. Spin it round to the other side. Any really long ones, you might just want to pick them off. Um, and be careful as we're going up through. Again, sometimes these splinters will kind of want to um, poke out and it could, you know, get a splinter. Just knocking off any kind of breakout that we got on the bandsaw. And there we go. A little rustic shelf. Nice little thing. You could pop your um, plant pots on here. Um, yeah, so really easy, simple little project um, and really quick as well. One that you know anyone can have a go at. And you don't need all these machines and stuff. Um, you know, bare minimum is a couple of drills or a, a drill. You can change between the drill bit and your, um, you know, the the um, posi 2 bit um, but yeah really nice and easy um, you could cut all of this with a handsaw um, and that's it little palette project thanks for watching and um, we'll get back to Jason and see how he's getting on okay so we've got our board we've got our circle um, a window with a hole maybe portal um, not a toilet seat for some of you that think I know it looks um, all right. so got that nice pattern on the top you can't really see that it looks quite good actually I quite like that um, got to turn it over we put a couple of scrap bits of pine out the pallet just underneath so we can use those as a razor get that in there lock everything down again just going to come back with that clamp a bit check I've got pressure Ooh -hoo. push that board over look and away from the circle a bit so I'm trying to get the board that's in underneath under where that little clamp is. That's good, that'll pull that side down. That one as well. So I'm working on the underside now. It doesn't matter if I've got a little bit of bounce on here, we're gonna work on here, it'll push it down a bit. Router, I've already loaded the cutter a little bit. So we've got large rebate style cutter. Sorry, let's just come back a little bit there. Okay, so that large rebate style cutter. Onto there, there is a whole range of different interchangeable bearings. So I expect if I bring this up to here, you can see all those little bearings, different sizes, different diameters. So it allows me to create different rebates. I've taken off the one that we've measured. That's the one up on here. We're going to need it in a second. Going to change it for a slightly bigger diameter. So just going to set that up. So I need a spacer washer, the bearing on, check the bearing spins, the lock screw and the top. Now the reason for changing, I've halved the amount I need to take off. So instead of doing one massive big heavy cut, I can do it in two or three. 
Just trying to get the screw in. Bring him down. Again, by doing this in the router, you've got something to hold. You've got no power on the router at this stage. So everything is isolated, tighten up, check the bearing goes round. See what's going on, that's good. Okay, so that's set up. Don't want to go full depth in one go. I'm just trying to see where we are a minute now. We could even do that sensible thing and look at our board, thickness, what we got. I'm gonna to come to the front of the board, probably gonna, oh no, good you in camera shot. I can look at where we are there, I wanna see how far down we can come. All right, so I've undone the side handle, depth stop I need to undo and just lift up. That one there, I'm gonna bring it down. Looking at my maximum depth I can get. Depth, so I'm looking on the front here, sighting in through, seeing where the bearer is, is running, seeing how much cut I've got, why I'm cutting to. That's our maximum, so I can lock this off. Depth collar on there, that's done. Bring that back up. We don't wanna do this in one heavy cut. How much are we cutting? Let's come back a little bit, sight it. I can look at the gap I've got between the depth stop. I can adjust it. So we're gonna do one setup with this, which will take the inner circle out, help reduce the break out, gently lower it. Then we can change to the bearing, do the second pass. A little bit long-winded, but actually we should give us a better finish. Hoover hose back on. We've set our depth, we can lock it off there. Just checking for the cable now, it's down there, look. So uh, goggles and earmuffs are at the ready. Check it's off, it's on there. Put that on, so goggles on. So there, I can lift everything up carefully. Try and get stability. Put it on. Shouldn't be coming over. So I'll cut. Go around. Put our circle. I'm going to drop it down a bit. Looking at my depth stop, how much I'm coming down. So we've gone a bit deeper. And there. Last one. I'm going to come down. I'll pull up my collar off. That's good. Gently working down. Tight. Isolate it. Get everything out of the way here. Again, I can still use, if I can get to it, the bearing. And there, get the Allen key to fit. Over the way with the realtor. So the Festool's quite nice. The fact I've got a spindle look up on here makes it easy to lock that and change the bearing. Take that one off. Gonna swap it over. Smaller one. Load it, checking which way it needs to be on there. So there's a gap between the cutter. Can't have it that way, it's gonna drift up and down a bit. Eh, that'd be easy. Just check it spins and what's happening. That looks good. Put the little parts that I don't need out of the way carefully. Okay. Going to lock that off. Have a wait. Okay. Check the bearings tight. There's nothing worse than these unwinding now. I just need to see where we are. On there, I can come up a little bit. What am I looking at? Checking the bearing is hitting the lower recess. Further down. Very difficult to show you on the camera. So the bearing's got to hit that bit. The bit we haven't cut yet, we brought it up. We know our depth is the same. We haven't changed the cutter depth. Jump all the hoses. Hold the router so it doesn't fall over. To there. Hose back on. Do the same again now. So this will open this out. Okay. 
going to drop our depth down. A bit ragged on the top here, but we've got to sort that out in a minute. few fluffy fibres that are playing up interfering with stuff they are bit of a break I think a minute might be needed okay let's just check our dope that looks, seems right okay so first bit, going to just reset up the router and then we'll be back for the next little bit. So just changing that bearing, tightening that up. Next thing I've just done and looked at, so smallest bearing on there. That's going to give me maximum offset between the centre and the diameter of the cutter. Other thing I've done, just changed the cutter depth, I've lowered it by 6mm. So I've used the scale on the high depth adjuster, brought everything down on the lower platform, set up 6mm on there and dropped it down by 6mm. So in my case, I need 6mm for what we're going to insert. So, having done that, I've checked the bearing will still hit the lower bit without dropping up through too much. Just have a quick look, see what's going on. Hard to see, it'd be nice to take it up off the bench. Maybe get a camera under there, I don't know. So, back on. Here, yeah, muffs are back on. Halfway, but I can see where my issues now are. I'm moving around the bench a bit too much. Let's move that back a little bit. Okay. Get a bit more weight on here, a bit better. Sorry, a few issues I've got in the Sorry, that's not bad. Just want to clean up this top edge. Getting a little bit of fluff off the shavings where we're cutting. The board obviously varies in thickness just a little bit. By sand the fluff off, it will stop it dragging on the router. It will also help me get that cut finish that I've logged here. Okay. I think that'll be all right. So we have our recess and rebate now as another circle. We we'll take that off, turn it over. That's the interesting side, really. Okay. The last thing I do, just going to set the bench up, and we're going to trim this just to get it back to being square now as a board. Could have done it earlier if you wanted a circle. You could cut your circle out when you had the middle. Bit difficult to do now. We've got nothing to run off in here. All right, so I'll square this up. Whether it's a square, and then we'll give you a bit of an idea of what we've made. Okay, so I'm just going to reset the bench. We'll get you back in a second. Right, okay, guys. So what we've got to do is got to square this up a little bit. So, we've got a board now, set up the bench a little bit with lots of puff stuff. So, we've got puff dogs, we've got the holes in here, it makes it quick and simple. You could do what we're going to do on the table saw. We've done most of this up on the bench, I'm trying to keep it in one area about having to move the cameras and everything about. So, two bits of pine underneath, raise it up. So, I'm not just going to score the surface of the bench. Got the dogs in here, we're going to put our board in, going to go that way first. 
We've got a square edge, actually, it's probably squarer across the width because all the boards where they were glued together were machined up and paralleled. So they should be pretty square. The, the bottom edges and the top edge, if you like, on here, a little bit out. So I've got to square those up. So the dogs have got longer ones here. That gives me a stop. I can use the square aspect of that board to give me where I want to be shape-wise. Okay? So we've got that on. Next thing, we want guide rail to work on. So go bring it on. Now the guide rail aspect on here, I'm going to be able to clip that on. All right, spring loaded, so they clip on. I can see what I'm cutting on the board here. All right, so I'll bring my glasses on so I can see it. Where do I want to be? I want minimum, really. I don't want too much there, especially top and bottom. Now if I push everything towards the two dogs on the far side and I'm using the guide rail here in the location hole everything is nice and square so it gives me a square setup so some of you might not have room for a big table saw this can be a better way of going next thing I want to do I'm just going to lift the saw off the track I've got to adjust our depth again we want to go through this I can even actually probably from my point of view be easier just to turn the saw around oh. Just have a quick check on the bench, see where we are, drop it on. Okay, so it looks good. I could even actually do some maths and work it out. Where am I? I am 25, yeah, that'd be enough. Okay, so our aim is just to square this up. I've got to hold it here, hands nicely out the way. So other things we want, air. Get that extractor back in. Power lead. Got my goggles on, so that's good lead up there so first one I'm trying to take bare minimum off the far side come back not too much space for this lock it in we need I said I was close no two mil that's better now we're just going to move through relatively slowly oh well it's amazing how much the board varies in thickness a little bit there it's tough it, but not as clean as I'd like. So let's have another go. That's better. One dumb. Take those spring clips off. Gently lift them up. So I've got something square there, I can see my edge. Gonna turn the board round. We we'll do the other one now. Other side. Our support bits. I've got an idea where my pencil line is for the circle that we drew. And again, we could have this as a circle. Get my spring on. Oh, that one's tight, that edge. Push it against the two far dogs again. See my circle, got that there. Looking at the bottom edge of where we are. And come to there. Just brought it up enough. Again, lock everything off. Hold it in my hand. Gently push it across. Trying to get my table up. Uh -huh. Go across. So nice and clean all the way through there got the two sides to do now that looks quite balanced out bring in can still use where we are here we haven't got to worry about having the dog on this side coming in too much I can work off the far side the long ones here the position I want so let's just tighten that one down again spring back over we'll get this position first and then I can worry about where the board's got to be I've got my circle I can see here I want to come back. I'm just really measuring. So I can use my thumbnail as a guide of what I've got as an overhang off my pencil line, if you like. And that sounds crude, doesn't it? But I can come up to the edge of that guide rail. So I can physically see where we are. That's good. I hold there. Push it through. One dumb last side to do. Bring that round, turn it over, again get the clips on first and I've got my thumbnail position 
pushing against the two fur dogs so everything lines up square i've got an idea of how much overhang we want that's good So no, let's just strip this down briefly. Okay, we're looking a bit better now, I think. Right, more square, we've got a hole. I've got a little bit of cleaning up. Could sand this. Um, I'd still like to wire brush it really quite heavily with electric drill. A wire brush could be really good. I've got to sand a little bit to lose the pencil line we've got as a circle, which I expect if we go to there. You can see the pencil line I've got here. These grooves you got to do. Going to put something with some finish of some wax or something on it, so the grooves will show. I'd like to do a dark coloured wax, but that'll get into those grooves a bit more. It'll highlight it a bit, and then maybe sand the top back. That could be a nice way of doing it. Or put a stain on, then sand this off. All right, we we'll have a look. On the back, got to cut a recess piece to fit in, so I could even draw that out and cut it out. Probably jigsaw, bandsaw. Okay, just to fill that hole. Now for a minute then, let's get to there. We're trying, I think what we do, we do your finished picture when it's totally done. So what we're making, if I get it in there, how much something is a wall mirror? Something quite nice, and you can have it up on edge. There, the circle bit, if you start to look at it, I don't know if we can get into here. Woo, it looks quite good, doesn't it? You get the idea of what we're making. Okay, so we're doing something as a wall mirror, just to do that. And it's quite a nice little project, actually. All right. So we'll get a finished shot when we're totally done. We'll see you a bit later. OK, so there it is all carved out. I've done a little bit of sanding and we've added some um, sort of scale textures also with the, the Arbitec Carver. But instead of painting it like we did on this one, we're going to take it outside now and scorch it. Um, I was going to paint to start with, and then I seen how nice the texture is coming off from this pallet timber. And I think it's going to scorch really well. We'll do some highlights in there as well with the burner. Um, uh, we'll also put a little eye in there as well. So let's go outside and, uh, and do some scorching. So there you have it, a shelf, a fish and a mirror, all things to hang on your wall at home. Hope you've enjoyed the woodworking wisdom today. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share and we'll see you next time.